Then 6.4 requires a couple of things to remember from 6.3. The first is, start on a new page. If I have radical X and I multiply it by another radical X, what do we get? Uh, radical X squared and then it's X. Okay, so what would be radical three times radical three? It would be three. Radical seven times radical seven? Seven. Uh, just to drive this home, x squared y p q r cubed times x squared y p q r cubed. If I multiply these two things together, what do I get? Same thing, x squared x squared y p q r to the cube. Okay, so the, the generalization we need to get out of this is if I multiply a square root by itself, I get the whole thing. Right. So if I have one radical mm -hmm. and I multiply it by itself, I get the whole. And it becomes no, the whole. Right? Yeah, right. it becomes whatever the radicand is. So right. here yeah. you just have the square root of the radicand. If I give you another one, you get the whole. What would this be? Uh, X. Right. Yeah. So you're saying that square root of X and cube root of X are the same thing then? No. no. Uh. Oh, no, it's not. If you do it by three times, right? If we right. So the moral of the story is that you need to have how many terms being multiplied? By the number of index. What the index number, yeah. So here we have the index of two, so that's why I need two terms. Mm -hmm. If I want to make a whole and I have a cube root, I need three terms. That gives us X. Fair? Ah. I need to have three of them in order to get rid of a cube root. So mm -hmm. if I have x squared and then I have the seventh root, uh, how would I get a whole out of this? Uh, you need seven terms of x squared. Um, of x squared. Okay, so here's where I want you to think. Mm -hmm. The reason why this whole thing goes into an, a power of one is because when I multiply x by x by x, I get x cubed, right? Mm -hmm. And then three, the power divided by the index gives us one. Okay. If I had another six x squares, what would be the sum of all the powers? They're going to add up. Yeah. Squared, right? So you have squared. Well, the 12 for the new ones, and then I have another two from here. So what will be the total sum? 14. 14. And yes. then 14 divided by 7 would give us? Two. Two. So do we see how we can get a whole out of this? Mm -hmm. But I also, also want you to think of the following. If you look at the index... One thing is you need the index number of terms. But doesn't x squared already mean that you have two x's to begin with? So there are two ways to answer that question. You can either take x squared to be a single term, or you can say, hey, x squared is really x times x, so I have two of them already. In order to get a total of seven, how many more do I need? Just five more. So. And then this answer would be what? Just x then, right? Just x. Because now if you multiply, you would add the exponents and you get 2 plus 5, which is 7. Mm -hmm. If you divide the power by the index, you would get x to the first. Now, earlier, you guys said, let's multiply it by x to the 12th. And in that case, it would give us x squared. 
So it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. It, it's not like a one size fits all approach. Depends on what you want to do. Do you want the smallest possible answer or do you just want a answer? An answer. Are we okay with this? Ooh. Okay. If I want to make this a whole, what would I need to multiply this by? Which one? Oh, the, the oh, by I itself? Squared. How many times? Three times. Three two times. Two, two times total, so two, two more. Two more. Easy. Get in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. Okay. Yep. Okay. So now we can maybe start talking about. Um. Division, actually. Mm -hmm. So in section 6.1, we talked about, or 6.2 maybe, we talked about addition and subtraction of radicals. 6.3, we talked about multiplication of radicals. In 6.4, we're talking about division of radicals. So we've kind of run all the, the I guess, the operations. Right. Here is where you have to remember one basic idea. We don't want radicals in the denominator. Okay. Can we have radicals in the numerator? No problem. But when you have a fraction, it's not appropriate to have radicals in the denominator. Keeping that in the back of our minds for the rest of the class today, what could I multiply this fraction? Or forget about this fraction. I just want you to concentrate on radical 5 and nothing else. If I just have radical 5, what would I multiply radical 5 by in order to get rid of the radical? Uh, itself? Itself. How many times? One, One time. Because? It's a square. It's a square root. Root, square root. Yeah. So I only need one more. So I can throw a radical 5 here. Now, if I do that, I've changed the problem, and I'm not allowed to do that. Okay. So what could I also do to make sure that the question does not change? Um, you uh, multiply them and then you take the, you will, once it becomes square root of 25, it'll just become five. No, no, no. I cannot just multiply this radical five by radical five. I'm changing the problem. I cannot just do that. Mm -hmm. I have to do something else as well to make sure everything is balanced. Do the same thing on the top. Bingo. Why does multiplying this fraction by radical 5 over radical 5 not change the problem? Because if I just do it to the bottom, I change it. But why is it that if I do it to the top and the bottom, nothing changes? You end up with the same answer? Well, yes, but why? Because what do we do to the bottom and do the top? Well, yeah, but why do we do that? You're right that that's what we do. <laughs> you know, that's, that's like a rule. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a rule, but okay. What is 7 divided by 7? A 1. What's 3 divided by 3? 1. So if we divide something by itself, what do we get? 1. If I divide radical 5 by radical 5, what will I get? 1. And what happens if I multiply something by one? Just you get itself. It's itself. Do we see why we do that? Why is it that we multiply top and bottom by the same number? Okay. It's because you can make it look different. You're doing some plastic surgery, but you're not changing the thing on the inside. It's the, this problem is still radical six over radical five. 
Mm-hmm. We're just giving it a makeover. It's still the okay. same person. It's still the same problem. By multiplying it by root five over root five, you're not changing the question. So that's why we do it. That's why since elementary school, you've been told whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom as well. The reason again is if you multiply something by one, nothing changes. You're still solving the same problem then. And that's a legal thing to do. So, okay. Now, radical five times radical five, based on the stuff that we just did, should be what? Five. Just five. Five, yeah. And then radical six times radical five would be what? Radical 30. Radical 30. Can we reduce that? Can we simplify that further? Yeah. Uh, yeah. What would we put it up into? No, you can't. Yeah, you can't. Cannot. Okay, so then the question is over. Interesting. How do we know that this question is over? Well, we had a radical in the denominator. Do we have a radical in the denominator anymore? No. Problem ac- or mission accomplished. That's what we set out to do. Are so the whole okay point of division is to get rid of the rad- ra- radical. The radical or the square root or the cube root or whatever we have in the denominator. We don't want it there. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's do another one. So this one is this. What would we do with this? Well, actually, do this yourselves. Tell, think about it. Do it. And then we'll discuss the answer in two minutes. Thank you. Okay. I'm good. Both of you are done? Yes. Okay, so what do we think the answer is? If it's the same, then we move on. I got... Okay, you go first, Kim. <laughs> no, you go first. <laughs> yeah, you got, you got it. <laughs> no, Mike's not right. Who I cares got... if it's right or not? Tell me what you got. I got five. Um, uh, the radical six over five with the three on top of it. So you're saying five, why is my pen not working? Okay, there it goes. You're saying that this is equal to five cube root of six over five, like that? Yes. Well, then why don't these fives just cancel out? Oh, I didn't think of that. So then you're saying that cube root of six divided by cube root of five is just the same as cube root of six? Yes. So then you're saying that the cube root of five is one. 
because this is the same as this divided by one, right? So if the tops are the same, the bottoms have to be the same as well. Oh, I told you I was wrong. <laughs> Again, the, the point is not that you're wrong. The point is I need you to understand where the mistake is. So, oh, okay. Again, if you make the mistake in class, then I can fix it. If you make yeah. the mistake at home by yourself, then well, I can't help you. Okay, so let's think of let's backtrack what you did. So what did you do first? So what I did was since um, cube root of five, I need two more to remove the. Okay, the cube. So what should I multiply by? Uh, two more. So cube root of five over cube root of five times cube root of five over cube root of five. Okay, yes. and now what do I do? So I multiply everything on the top, which gives me 150, um, cube root 150. Okay, over? Over five. Okay. And how do we find cube root of 150 from section 6.1? So the highest, maybe I'm wrong about this, but the highest that I think that I have is six times 20, 25 times six. Okay. Is 25 a perfect cube or is it six that's a perfect cube? 25. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what the mistake is. Oh. Do you see the I, mistake now? Yes, I do. You got to be careful about which list you're thinking of. Are you thinking of a cube list or are you thinking of a square list? So depending on the question, list? yeah, depending on the question, you need to make sure you're looking at the right or maybe thinking of the right list. Mm. Are we okay with this? Yes. So this actually is done. You can't do anything else with this. This problem is over at that stage. Because if you look at your list of cubes, the highest cube that's less than 150 is 125. It's not a factor. Then you go down to 64, and that's not a factor. Then you go down to 27, that's not a factor either. Then you go down to 4, and that's not a factor either. So this is it. There's nothing else you can do. Okay, so I was in the right direction. Okay. Yeah. You just have to know when to get off the bus or when not to take the wrong bus going the other way. Uh, let's do one other thing. Okay. As a refresher, what is this equal to? A square minus B squared. So remember, actually, we already did an example of this right here. Mm hmm. What do you observe is happening on the left-hand side, and what do you observe is happening? Uh, tell me what you observe here. Tell me what's happening on the left versus the right-hand side. Hmm. Talking about the, um, the first, the first uh, one in the answer or the, the, the... I'm talking about this line. Uh -huh. So look at the left side of the equal sign and look at the right side of the equal sign. Tell me everything you observe. What what do you think is happening here? Um. So I got four. So pretty much, the first one is uh it's squared but with the difference. Okay. Well, okay. What do you see here that is not here? Four x. You guys are too close to the problem. Move away from the question. Think broader. I'm asking for a general answer. What do you have on the left-hand side that you do not have on the right-hand side? Parentheses. Okay, fair. Or, what else? Radicals. Radicals. Oh. oh. Okay. So if I have... Something like this. What do you think I should multiply root 5 plus root 2 by 
so that I don't have any radicals left over. Uh, root five, subtract with um, square root of two. Sorry. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Virginia, do you see it? Because if I use this formula, if I can create a scenario where I can bring in this formula, remember that in the previous example, we didn't have any radicals left over on the right hand side. Mm -hmm. So if I multiplied top and bottom by radical five minus radical two over radical five minus radical two. Well, okay, so now the question becomes why minus, why not plus? Right, that's what I'm thinking right now. So, Mr. Ed, why did you pick minus? I did a difference of square, so it just, just condenses. It just condenses better. I don't know. Well, it's not a matter of better or worse. It's a matter of why would you do that? Yeah, because it gives um, you two whole numbers. Mm -mm. No. You're right that it does, but that's not the reason for doing it. Why would we pick the minus instead of the plus? The plus is prime, right? Mm -mm. So, no. Is it because it will cancel? Some of the numbers will cancel out. Is that why? Uh, you guys are circling the drain, so I'll give it to you. In order to use this formula, do you have the A plus B term here, or do you have the A minus B term here? Plus. So if you want to use this formula, what do you have to give it to? What do you have to give it? A minus. So that's why we multiplied it by minus. What happens if this had been a minus to begin with? Then you give the plus, right? So if we had this to start with, then mm -hmm. which of these two terms do we have in the problem already? You already have the minus, so you just... So then... Yeah. Correct opposite operation this relationship is called the conjugate oh i've heard of that hopefully so now I'll... you know what it means the conjugate is the same exact stuff but with the opposite sign so if you have a minus in the middle you change it to a plus and that becomes the conjugate if you have a plus in the middle then we change it to a minus and it becomes the conjugate as well so what will be the conjugate to three plus root seven? Three minus root seven. What will be the conjugate to negative five plus root seven? Negative five minus root seven. Why didn't you change the sign on the five? Because uh, you can't do that. <laughs> I agree. You're right. You can't do that. You only change the sign in the middle. Right. Not the sign on the first term. Uh, good catch there. What if we have radical 5 minus radical 13? What would be the conjugate of that? Um, um, plus. Does that make sense? Yes. So anytime you have just a single term in the denominator, like here, do mm -hmm. you want to play with a conjugate? Yes. No. No. You're oh, no, 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 no. Use the conjugate because you just have one term. Oh, if yeah. You have a single term, you give it what it needs to make it a whole. Right. We did the same thing here. We had a cube root, so we gave it two more terms to make it a whole. How many terms do I have in this question? Two. Two. When you have, two, excuse me, when you have two terms, you use the conjugate. That's pretty much the entire section. If you have one term, you give it what it's missing to make it a whole. Mm -hmm. When you have two terms, you use the conjugate. So let's actually do this problem and, and see what happens. Or I'll leave this here. I know the original question had a had different signs, but let's just solve this one because I have it written out already. Okay, so let's think about the denominator first. The reason why we multiplied the con by the conjugate was so that we could use which formula? The difference of square. 
So using the difference of squares formula, what would the answer be for the denominator? R you square minus. the first term. So what will be the square of radical five? Five. Just five. You square the second term. So what will be the square of square root of x? Two. Two. And what goes in the middle? Difference. Difference. Minus. Do we see how easy that is if you know the formulas? Right. Well, so just knowing the formulas is, is not useful enough because a lot of students think that, oh, I'll just write it down very quickly at the beginning of the test. The problem is that that approach doesn't tell you when to use them. So you only really know the form. It, it, even if I gave you a cheat sheet, it, it wouldn't help because you wouldn't know when to use that formula. You have to do enough of these practice questions using the formula so you recognize, oh, here is where I need to use it. Right, when to application. Right? Yeah. It's like, oh, I know what a hammer is, but I don't know when to use a hammer versus a chisel. So I might know that's a hammer, that's a chisel. You might even label it underneath, like put, put it on a sheet of paper that says, this is a hammer, put a chisel on a sheet of paper that says, this is a chisel. But then if you're building a table, you have, if you don't know how to use both, mm -hmm. you won't know which to grab when. If you need to drive in a nail, maybe, well, if you have common sense, you obviously go for the hammer, but it's the same idea. Just knowing right. the formulas is not sufficient. You have to know yeah. when to use them. Yeah. Okay, so back to this. Uh, I'm going to leave the numerator as it is, and you will see why in a second. So could we clean up the bottom? Yep. Could we clean it up? What do you mean? Could we combine like terms? Like what's 5 minus 2? Oh, yeah, um, 3. And you just cancel out the 3s. Do we see that this 3 and this 3 can cancel now? Because I have a product in the middle. Mm. Now what happens if I had distributed the 3 inside? It becomes a lot more complicated. Well, not complicated. Wait. I I would do this. So I would have three radical five plus three radical two, over three. Now, what would I need to do again in order to cancel this three out? Wouldn't I have to factor it out and put it like that again? Right. Yes. It's like well, you go one step forward only to go back to where you came from, so that you can cancel the three out. Right. So don't distribute unless it becomes a necessity or unless that's the only thing you can do. Never distribute as a first thought or as a first option. So this 3 cancels with this 3, and your answer is root 5 plus root 2. Cancel, cancel. Questions? I just, I, I get this section way much better. This section was a stressful, but I was having a hard time. <laughs> In order to know this section, you have to know the previous three cold. So you might be, you know, being afraid of the previous three sections for no reason. Because in order to do problems in this section properly, you have to know how to simplify radicals from previous sections. You, you can't keep going on uh, without knowing them. All right, so I'm going to give you guys a question, see if you can solve this on your own, and if you can, then that's pretty much it. So let's give you radical here. And mom, is there going to be ones with variables in it? What, what difference does it make if there are? Okay, fine, I'll give you variables. No! <laughs> Kim! Well, it's either you do it now or you do it later. It's your choice. Oh, and variables everywhere. Okay, there. Oh, Lord. You're oh. fine. But it, it's so simple. You guys just freak out for no reason whatsoever. Try it. Take two minutes. Whew, okay.
Okay. Uh, okay. I don't know if the answer is right, but I got 15 XY. Virginia? Uh, Any input? We, we don't have the same answer. Okay, uh, what did you get? I'm kind of stuck because I got five X plus three over X plus Y. That's where I'm stuck at. I don't even know if that's right. Okay, well, let's do this. So what should I multiply this by? That needs to not be controversial at all. Right. Uh, 
square root of x minus square root of y on both numerator and denominator difference of squares. Do we all agree on that? Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the conjugate of the denominator. Right. That in order to get, cancel out these radicals on the bottom, if I have a, a sum already, the term that I need to give it is a subtraction or a difference so that I can invoke or bring in the difference of squares formula. So we'll deal with the numerator in a second. For the denominator, what will we have? Oh, x minus y. Are we okay with that? Because the square root of x squared will just be x, and then the square of square root of y will just be y. Right. Okay, so how do we do the numerator? Because this is 6.3. Oh, you just FOIL it out. That's okay, what tell me what to write. Um, I got, when you FOIL it, I got square root of 5x squared minus square root of 5xy minus square root of 3xy minus square root of 3y squared. Kim, <laughs> your answer is right. I had a five on my is, top one. <laughs> I don't know where I got the five. Oh, wait, wait, wait. let's not crown winners yet. Right. What happens I'm next? <laughs> so what I did is I did individual problem try to get the square root out. So okay, uh, x out of the five x squared. So it's x square root of five minus. And then that stays square root of 5xy. Minus, that stays the same, that square root of 3xy. And then minus y square root of 3. And x over x minus y. Okay, and then? And then you just, come, and then you just uh, you just do the problem from left to right. So I had, I put, I, I rewrote it into equals um, x minus y in the numerator. What do you mean, how do you get x minus y? Because it's a whole numbers on the outside or like the whole variable. So you're combining this with this? Yeah. What does it mean or what Conditions do terms have to satisfy in order to be considered like terms so you can combine them like you're doing? They have the same radicand and the same um, square roots are the same index. sign. Index, yeah. Do they have the same radicand? No. So then no. are you combining these two terms? This question is done. This question is done? Oh, wow. Yeah. Again, you, you guys are doing things that you're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. so you're combining things that are not like terms. So don't do that. Whenever you start to do that, go back to basic principles and think to yourself, I'm, a I'm about to start combining like terms. Do I have like terms to combine? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. th this question is done. You were obligated to reduce this x squared and put an x on the outside and reduce the y squared and put the y on the outside. But that's mm -hmm. it. This question is over. There's nothing else that can be done. Got you. So the radic hands have to be the same in order to combine everything with it. Yep. Was, that, that's what it means for two things to be like terms. In order for us right. to add or subtract, you might remember it from the 6.2 video. The indices have to be the same, and the radicands have to be the same. So okay. maybe flip through your notes, take a look at that sentence again. Oh, that's for adding and subtracting. To, that's why. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is why I told Virginia earlier that in order to do division correctly, didn't we have to find the product of these two radical things? Right. So that was basically 6.3 on top, mm -hmm. foiling it out. And then here, you have to know 
when you can combine like terms and when you can't. So that's where I can test your knowledge of 6.1 and 6.2 as well. So that, that's why I said that if this is easier, then maybe you understand things better than perhaps you do, or maybe it's a false sense of security that it's easier. Right. The foundation for this section is the three previous sections. We cannot get these questions right unless mm -hmm. we remember the rules from the previous three sections. But yeah, this is a two-step problem and you guys were freaking out about variables. What, what difference does it make if you have variables in the question? It, does, it shouldn't, but it does. <laughs> it, it doesn't. Those things. <laughs> it shouldn't. It, it's easy. That, that's it. There, there's nothing else. It's like having fractions for like certain questions. You're like fractions freak people out, but it's just. I, I don't understand why. I, I don't know why that happens. Right. Uh, are you guys good with this or do you want to do another one? Okay. Your choice. I would like to do one more. Okay. Another example. We can, we got plenty of time, so we can do as many as you like. Uh, let's go back to numbers. I'll make this one more interesting. That should work. Try that one. Work on it two, three minutes, then tell me what you get. Answer. What do you get? I got a 
uh, five square root of two plus three square root of 10 plus two square root of 15 plus six square root of three all over negative eight. Virginia, any luck? I think she might be away. All right. Okay, well, let's try this. So what did you multiply by? Uh, the difference, um, the conjugate, so square root of 10 plus square root of 18 on both numerator and denominator. Okay, so for the numerator, we'll have 5 times 10, which is radical 50, plus 5 times 18, which is radical 90, 6 times 10, which is radical 60, 6 times 18 is what? Uh, radical 108. Thank you. All over 10 over 10 minus 18. So that is... A negative 8 on the bottom, 10 mm -hmm. minus 18. Radical 50, you split up into 5 root 2. That's okay. Uh, this would be 9 times 10, so 3 root 10. Yep, that's what you have. 60 would be... 4 and 15. Yeah, 4 and 15 works. So 2 root 15. 108, 36. Yeah. So six root, yeah, that's what you have. And that's it, right? Because you. Well, don't we have like terms? No. Correct. We do not have like terms. Even though everything is a radical, everything is a square root, the radicands are different. Right. So this question is done. You cannot do anything with this. Now, if this had been, it's not. But let's say that it were. Mm-hmm. Let's say this had been 15 on the inside. Mm -hmm. What would the answer to this be? It would be 5 radical 2 plus 3 radical 10 plus 8 radical 15 over right. negative 8. 8, yeah, over negative 8. That's it.